everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Cult Classics Show. A show in which I talk about older movies that people may or may not like. And today I'm talking about Friday the 13th, Part 6. Now, Friday the 13th is a series that I recently watched all of for no good reason, really. I decided to just watch them one day. I saw that Friday the 13th Part 1, the original, was on Amazon Prime, so I watched it, and I hated it. I literally hated it. I hated almost everything about Part 1. And yet, I still decided that, you know what would be a good idea if I watch Parts 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, which all have different names past Part 8? which is Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> then it's Jason Lives, Jason X, Freddy vs. Jason, and Friday the 13th reboot. And I watched all of them. I watched literally every single Friday the 13th movie, and the only one that is anywhere near good, or even great, I dare say, is Friday the 13th, part six. The worst thing that this franchise does, the, the biggest thing they're guilty of, is that they have no story. And they have no characters that are interesting. Friday the 13th, part one through seven are virtually the same movie. You have a group of teenagers going to a place and getting killed by Jason. And that is it. It is essentially the same movie over and over and over and over and over and over again. Even the movies that New Line Cinema pu pumped out because the first eight, th one through Jason Takes Manhattan were done by Paramount. And then uh, everything past that is New Line Cinema or uh, collaboration with Paramount in the case of the reboot. Every single one is almost identical in structure, in tone, in execution. They're all the same-ish movie. The only thing that makes them fun is the slight gimmicks between the movies. Part 3 is in 3D. Fun! Part 4 has Corey Feldman and Jason gets killed. Wow! Part 5 is a murder mystery. And Part 6 is basically just Friday the 13th again. The only difference is it is self-aware. It has the goofiest tone in the entire series. It has a story and it has characters you like. For the first time in literally every other movie in the entire series, there are things that happen. There are characters you like. And that is what I love about this movie. You're gonna be the death of me. Yeah, but what a way to go, huh? <laughs> it isn't just the tongue-in-cheek tongue in cheek tone or the self-aware humor and, and tone that it has that I like, which, to be fair, I really like. I love how aware of itself this movie is. It knows it's just another Friday the 13th movie, and it really plays on that in a way that actually works. Because the main story in Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, is after Part 4, when Jason's killed, and Part 5, when there's an imposter, Part 6, the first thing that happens is Tommy Jarvis, who is played by Corey Feldman in the fourth movie, who killed Jason, goes back to Jason's grave for no reason and wants to dig him up to make sure that he is sent to hell. He wants to burn his corpse, so there's no chance of him uh, returning. So they dig him up, he's in there, and he stabs him with this um, iron rod from a fence, and then it gets struck by lightning, which for no reason or some reason resurrects Jason. Uh, and that opening scene is so goofy and self-aware. You have Jason punching through a guy's chest and holding his heart in his hand. It's amazing. But not only is the opening scene uh, very goofy, the whole movie is. There's a scene with paintballers, which is probably the worst part of the movie, the paintballer stuff. But it's the most campy that this movie has ever been. 
three guys get decapitated at the same time by Jason. Jason throws a guy into a tree branch where a smiley face is, where the guy's face hits. It's so goofy. And what I love about it is that it plays up how unstoppable Jason is. He's actually kind of intimidating in this movie despite it having a campy tone. He is a threat, legitimate force to be reckoned with in this movie. He is absolutely unstoppable. He flips an entire RV, kills the two people inside of it, gets up on top and stands on it in like uh, an incredibly menacing way. He is completely unstoppable. And in this movie, this is the only one where he just seems to be a ruthless, relentless killer. He doesn't stop. Everyone in his way gets murdered. In the other movies, they kind of kind of have to hide Jason. You have shots where he's looking out behind trees at people waiting for someone to split off so he can kill them. And most of the time, it is just one person dying at a time. Whereas in this one, he doesn't care who's around. He's just gonna murder people that are directly in front of him. And it's amazing to see. In this series, the characters don't matter as much as the kills. The story doesn't matter as much as the kills. Jason and the kills should take center stage. And that's not to say that you shouldn't have those things. I think you should, but the kills should take center stage, especially when all the characters are just complete flat lines like they are in so many of these movies. And this movie does that extraordinarily well. They're goofy, they're fun, and they're actually decently well executed to the point where they had to be cut down because they were too violent. They didn't want to get an X or NC-17 rating. They cut them down to get an R rating. There are some work prints you can see of the full kills, and I really wish that they allowed the full kills to be in the movie because some of them make them more campy and more fun. So that's kind of disappointing, one disappointing thing about it. But also, the story and the characters are here. They actually are presented and executed in a way that works, that's interesting. A big issue for the series is that the story here is basically non-existent. It is just characters going to a place and getting picked off one by one. That's it, that's the extent of the story. There is so little that drives the story forward. But here, there's actual plot points. There's actual characters doing things. And it is re absolutely refreshing after watching five duds in a row. You have Tommy Jarvis, who is, again, Corey Feldman from part four. He is grown up here and he re accidentally resurrects Jason. And when he goes to the police, the police recognize him as Tommy Jarvis and they say, no, Jason is dead, obviously. Like, you can't resurrect somebody. And so the threat is taken seriously in this movie, which I also like. I like that the tone is very goofy, but the threat is serious. It's like Ghostbusters, kind of. So they say, no, that's not possible, and they lock him up. And they say, you're crazy, you've obviously lost your mind, but then kills start to happen. And after they set him free, after holding him overnight. And so the police, I think rightfully, start thinking, that him is doing it, Tommy Jarvis is doing it. He's replicating the Jason kills to prove his uh, innocence in a sense. And so they think that it's him. So they start looking for him instead of for Jason, which allows Jason to go unchecked, murdering everybody. And so those plot points make sense. Those characters making decisions make sense. Plus the character relations here are so much more interesting than they are anywhere else in the series. Tommy Jarvis has a love interest that you like, who is the daughter of the sheriff. So she has some conflict by uh, disobeying her father to help out Tommy Jarvis, who she believes. And so there is actual dynamics there. There's actually interesting things happening and there are things that make sense. And there is one thing that happens after another. There's an escalation of events to the point where you finally, the sheriff finally gets to see that it's actually Jason and have that aha realization moment right before he gets murdered, where he gets bent in half in one of the most hilarious deaths in the series. And kind of sad because you actually like that character. He starts doing things likable and then he gets killed. It's, just, it's, it's too bad. real dead meat. So, what were you gonna be when you grew up? 
all in all, I think this movie really works. I think it is a legitimately good movie and maybe the only legitimately good movie in the series. And one I believe is the perfect boys night movie, the perfect movie to watch with your friends. You can get plastered, whatever you want to do and watch this. Even sober, I think this works perfectly well, but it is kind of, I think, would be ripe for that, even though I don't do that. Watching it just as I am, I had a blast on my own. I had a blast watching this and watching this with friends probably would make it a hundred times better. It is so entertaining. Minus some little pacing issues, those paintballers that are way too much. I love this movie. I, I would highly recommend you watch it if you haven't. You can literally skip the first five movies and basically understand what's going on because these movies are so simplistic. So check it out. Jason 6, or not Jason, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Check it out, everybody. It's really fun.